company just announcing a 20 for one stock split. It's a $3,000 stock, so yep. clearly that could bring in a lot more buyers, especially retail buyers, and that's why you, you see the stock moving. Of course, there's there are caveats, right, Mike, sure. that come with the stock split. It doesn't change anything fundamentally, right. but could attract a new buyer. It doesn't change anything fundamentally. There is, there is something, I mean, it, retail investors do flock to this kind of thing. They take it as uh, some kind of an excuse, especially for options traders, there is a practical advantage to having a somewhat lower price share price because you know you do trade options in these lots of uh, covering 100 shares so it seems like it makes it cheaper uh, and all the rest um Amazon's been a weak stock. I mean, that's the context here as well. Uh, it really has struggled for the last really year and a half. Uh, hasn't been able to get out of its own way till, since the early part of the pandemic. The company also authorizing a $10 billion share repurchase program that's new. It replaces one that was smaller, $5 billion uh, in place. That goes back to 2016. 2016 <laughs> and the company only bought back $2 billion stock, uh, in stock under that authorization. So it's not been a major repurchaser of its own stock. And keep in mind, even at $10 billion, it's a very small uh, percentage of the market cap, which right now is $1.4 trillion. So, look, Tesla stock split, it fed the crowd, it fed the public, uh, this, this kind of cosmetic change that they wanted. Apple Absolutely. did the stock split, split not that long ago. Uh, and there's another side story, which I don't really think anybody should care if it's the case, but um, maybe it, it, it prices it in the price zone to get into the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Obviously, the Dow is somewhat under uh, exposed to the very largest fang type companies, obviously Amazon with a massive economic mm. footprint. There's no real uh, magic in terms of performance of your stock if you go in the Dow. I mean, Salesforce can tell you that, right? That didn't necessarily kind of a work. badge of honor. It used to be. It, might, it probably still is. Um, and, you know, Amazon, I would have to say, too, uh, you know, clearly it doesn't it's not one of these founder controlled companies the way, you know, a Facebook is or Alphabet. So I do think that the 20 for one stock split news is a positive for Amazon to the extent that it'll materially lower the per share price and can attract a lot more consumer buyers. The real interesting story last quarter was the faster growing margin, high margin businesses. Uh, consumers looked at that and investors looked at that and were encouraged and bid shares up rather than worrying about the slower growing e-commerce. So to me, this 20 for one stock split is also good news for the stock. Tom, I mean, it's hard to, to kind of read minds here, but um, there's, you know, relatively new CEO at Amazon. The stock has struggled. Um, I, you know, it feels as if that they're in search of a little bit of a of a story and traction among investors. Do you see that, you know, the fact that they would come out with this now uh, at all interesting? I mean, they're going to be reporting earnings before too long, uh, and they came out with the news here. Uh, I do think kind of what you're hinting at, Mike, is that the company is perhaps looking for additional ways to try to improve shareholder performance and improve the stock price. So I agree that this isn't uh, the historical or recent historical, which is, you know, revenue growth and earnings growth and things of that nature. So, um, you know, perhaps they're pulling an old uh, lever here to drive share price, but I think that's more than okay. What about the buyback? Any significance there? They're, it looks like they're doubling the buyback authorization to $10 billion, one that they've had in place for years. Great question. So the way I think about the buyback is such. So with higher margin, better cash flow from cloud computing, advertising, they just broke out their advertising service revenue for the first time last quarter. Uh, it gives them more free cash flow to buy back shares. And the fact that they're raising the buyback suggests that not only they think shares are undervalued or underappreciated at current levels, but potentially that they're going to invest less in uh, square footage for fulfillment centers on a near-term basis. So I think that's also think, good news, higher authorization for the buyback. You think $10 billion is, uh, is, is big enough to, to, to really represent a significant gesture in those directions? Yeah, Mike, the way that I look at it is incrementality. So I think that the fact that they're going to you know, announce a $10 billion buyback, buyback shares, and then, you know, who knows, maybe at some point there'll be a perpetual a share buyback company like an Apple. So I do think it's interesting that they're going to devote more free cash flow to buying back shares. 